All right, welcome back everybody to part four of the parallax occlusion mapping series. Uh, today we are going to be talking about blending parallax occlusion maps together. Uh, so I think the intuitive thing that most people are going to try to do to start out is to lerp two palm uh, height maps together, but you'll immediately find that you can't interpolate between texture objects. So that leaves us with two options. One is you can either go into the parallax occlusion mapping node and modify the HLSL code to support multiple height maps. And that's honestly probably what I would recommend if you are comfortable with HLSL. Uh, I'll leave a comment, or excuse me, a, a link in the description with um, more information about how you can do that, but I don't wanna get into that in this video. Uh, so we're gonna be talking about the alternative, which is just using to parallax occlusion mapping nodes entirely. Uh, this leads to some redundant calculations and is less optimized, but uh, it should be good enough uh, for what we're trying to do here. So um, I've simplified things a little bit, kind of gone back to the basics just for the sake of demonstration um, here. And what this is uh, to start out is just a simple LERP, right? So I am using a smooth step to create just a simple LERP, um, and this is blending between the two maps. And so the immediate thing that you'll notice is that as you tilt the camera, the point that the parallax occlusion mapping transitions between the two different textures um, is not fixed in space, um, or at least it seems to be floating. And the reason for that is because our smooth step, our, our gradient that we're using here, in this case, just a you know a texture coordinate to create a divider, but this could be vertex paint, it could be landscape paint, uh, it could be anything, right? Is on the surface of the mesh, but our parallax occlusion mapping is recessed into the mesh using a reference plane of one. So this presents an immediate problem if you're using any traditional methods of blending, like uh, vertex painting or landscape um, painting, and so on. Um, so one way you can deal with this is to simply set your reference plane back to 0.5 like we've discussed in previous videos. You will need to ditch pixel depth offset um, since obviously again it can only recess the pixels. Um, and now you'll find that uh, as we get down to steep angles uh, we don't have noticeable uh, shifting in the transition point because it is um, planar with the average height of our height map. Um, however, you will still notice issues like, for example, a bit of phantom uh, texturing where basically both of the height maps textures are being, or both of the parallax textures are being layered on top of each other. And we have kind of like a halfway mush between each that gives us these kind of phantom rocks and objects. Um, this isn't particularly noticeable, especially from like the distances that players are going to be looking at things. Um, and if you keep the height ratio small and the blends relatively sharp, uh, it shouldn't be too noticeable. But that is one unavoidable artifact of this method. So uh, let's talk about additional things that we can do to improve it. And just I guess I'll first give you another overview here. So this is just creating the blend. This could be, again, any transition. Uh, and then just a standard lerp going between each of the different things. So the next one we have here is a height lerp. So what's happening here is we are doing the same basic setup, but we're using, in this case, height lerp with two height maps. Uh, you could use one height map, uh, but I'm just taking the height maps after the parallax occlusion mapping has been applied and using them uh, as a LERP with a high contrast. And what this gets us is uh, a non-blended uh, transition right here. You can see this rock in the center is fading to the grass texture, but with the height LERP, it continues to appear like a solid rock all the way up to the transition point. Um, I'm also, offsetting the transition texture. So instead of using a surface level texture, uh, we can actually offset it. 
uh, in this case, there's there's two ways. I'll show you how to do this, but there's actually a lot of ways that it can be done. One option here is to take the parallaxed UVs, and what I'm doing is taking the maximal value uh, between them. So this is saying, uh, you know, using the height map, I'm subtracting the height map from each other, and we're getting um, this, which is a blend between them, and we're taking a seal which is going to round up and it's basically going to give us uh, a threshold where where this um, the white and the black points uh, transition are the high points of each height map and we're going to use that as a lerp to drive between our two parallaxed UVs uh, and what this is giving us is uh, just didn't want to do that uh, a, if we go to this here, a transition that is also parallax. So you can see here the parallax occlusion mapping is actually spanning across our transition uh, texture coordinates uh, instead of floating above the surface of the plane. The reason I'm using the maximal value between the two is that if we go here, uh, and look at, say for example, the rock here. The rock is this high point, right? When we look at it from here, we want to be able to see the curvature of the rock. And then when we go over here, similarly, we want to be able to see the jutting out curved points of, you know, the peaks of our, our texture. Uh, that'll give us the most natural look. Whereas if I were to, for example, take either one height map or the other, or in this case, I'll use the example of the low point between them. As we transition to the steep angle, you'll see that it's actually cutting off the rock uh, it disappears here on these steep angles. So by taking the max point, we're saying, you know, that UV is more offset, therefore uh, use that one. So we can keep our silhouettes uh, and this really helps in blending. Um, another option, is to just use a flat plane. So what this is, if I just uh, maybe, let's grab a frac, throw this into the emissive, and maybe multiply it by 10. This is, is an offset texture coordinate that resides on the average point of our plane. So you'll see it looks connected to our virtual ground. Whereas if I were to take normal texture coordinates like this, you'll see it clearly is floating. Uh, and you know, if we were to use something like this for blending again, we'd have the same issue as we would with vertex painting or landscape uh, textures uh, or landscape blends. Whereas if we use this node uh, setup, now it's shifted it. Uh, it doesn't actually have any height map data, so it's just using an average. So if you don't want to use your actual parallaxed UVs uh, because they're causing artifacts or something, you can just use something like this that will take an average point. And um, this is essentially just generating offset uh, uh, camera, uh, you offset by the camera vector uh, angle. It is shifting the UVs accordingly. Um, there's, you can find more information about this specific setup in, um, in Ben Cloward's volume metric ice shader video, uh, which is where this specific setup has been borrowed from. So I'll include a link to that video as well. Um, and that actually is this, this technique here is fundamentally how parallax occlusion mapping works. These, uh, offset UV coordinates, uh, are stacked on top of each other. So this node group here is kind of the mathematical basis for which uh, the texture coordinates for uh, parallax occlusion mapping is generated. So that video um, can give you a little bit of insight as to what's actually going on uh, inside. And by using this set of coordinates, for example, to drive our blend, uh, let's get rid of that emissive. You'll see we also get a pretty good blend where we can go to steep angles and get minimal artifacts. We still get some artifacting, but it's 
fairly minimal uh, and it's agnostic to the height maps. So again, if you don't want to use your parallax UVs because they have some uh, something funky going on, uh, then you can just use flat offset UVs. Uh, and again, this is just using a height lerp. It's no, not fundamentally any different. I'm just using the height lerp to generate an alpha and then using that to drive um, standard lerps for each of our parameters. Uh, the shadow path switch here is just so that the pixel depth offset isn't um, blocking out the, uh, you know, isn't causing shadow artifacts in the material viewer. So you can ignore that. The last thing I wanted to show you is my personal favorite method. Uh, and this is a multi-phase um, LERP. So uh, same setup here, I've added shadow, uh, shadowing back in. Uh, so, you know, you can see how the shadows interact with multiple maps. Uh, but what's happening here is uh, in the center, we have our full, uh, full rock. And in our edge, we have the full uh, uh, roots and grass ground. And then in the transitionary section, we have... Um, the maximal value of each. So this is once again using that same technique, subtracting the two height maps together. In this case, I'm using a smooth seal so that I can get a um, softer transition. Since we're not using UV coordinates, I can actually lerp between both. And this is giving me, um, if I go to um, look at this, this is the um, the maximal value. So it's taking all of the high points from the rock texture and all of the high points from the grassy texture. So you can see, you know, any rock that sticks out the most is going to win and it's going to appear. And what this does for us is it guarantees that um, there is a an intersection at the point where these two textures transition. Whereas the biggest issue we have with this is we don't actually have a guaranteed transition or intersection at our transition point. If we look at this uh, rock here, we'll see that it doesn't actually intersect with the grass below. Uh, and this is the problem with blending, multi one of the problems with blending multiple parallax occlusion maps is that the point which they pass over each other and you're trying to transition from one to the other, they may be on two completely different physical planes and not actually be touching each other. Um, so this is basically a map of every point where they're touching. Um, and so we can use this to get a more natural transition. Uh, it will have some, depending on your textures, some artifacts in a sense that like transitions don't always look good. Uh, you know, an inter just because it's in an intersection doesn't necessarily mean it's a believable intersection. Like here we have these two rocks that are kind of clipping into each other. Um, and that looks a little weird. Uh, but obviously, every texture is going to be different. And especially with a natural texture like this, uh, that's not too noticeable, especially once you bring in uh, the, you know, the, uh, the shadowing and lighting and normal maps and stuff like that. Now it starts to look really natural. Um, and so Essentially, now the transition is happening where we go from all rock to the high points of the rock and the um, and the secondary texture, the grass, uh, which makes it so that the transition point is very natural, and we don't get really any uh, floating artifacts or any uh, ghosts. Technically, there are still some areas like this root is kind of phantom. If you look really closely, you can see that it's partially transparent, right? Because we are still blending over uh, a space, unlike this, where we have a sharp blend. This this generates no ghosting, um, you know, no phantom artifacts. But instead, you get these um, these floating artifacts. It's always going to be a compromise between those two with parallax occlusion mapping, unless you can get perfect intersections, which is possible, but uh, a lot of work. Um, so uh, here we've essentially minimized the area where uh, those 
artifacts can happen by creating uh, a middle transition phase that includes the highest elements of both. Um, and this, I think, gives the best looking result. Uh, I also chose this to demonstrate a kind of a weight map. Instead of using a texture, I'm using a sphere gradient, um, which looks like this, right? Um, and I'm using the offset UVs uh, to, you know, the, the maximal offset UVs in the same technique as last time around so that the texture is offset. And so if you were using this on a landscape, you would need to use a weight map that basically says apply, uh, you know, this occlusion map at this point. So that, that could be, for example, a virtual texture uh, that is being sampled. And um, it's important that it be a texture because you need to be able to um, offset the UV coordinates, uh, right? That, that weight map can't be normal per vertex data because vertex data can't be read with an offset coordinate. Uh, and so with this, um, just because it's dynamic, you can actually change the, uh, the radius here of this sphere and turn this unlit here. So uh, circle mask, so I can blend this out and you can see that as I do, the high points of the texture start to pop through and uh, we get fairly minimal uh, issues. And especially once we bring in our full lighting setup and as far as shadows go, uh, you know, those do work fine, obviously, still. Uh, th there, are, there are some issues with shadows when you're blending, because at the point where we're taking that maximal value, uh, the maps aren't casting shadows on each other, or else you would get artifacts. So like this rock can't cast a shadow on this other rock. So you know, it's not perfect, but that's not really noticeable at all. I, I don't think anybody would ever realize that that's happening. And gives really impressive results in, to my eyes. So um, and then obviously also you don't have to, I mean, you can use anything. So here if I use a, um, a flat transition like on the other ones, you can see what's happening here. It gives a very similar look to the height lerp but it just, to me, gives a more natural transition, right? With the high lerp, it goes straight from, uh, you know, from one to the other. Uh, whereas with this, um, then you could probably modify the high lerp more and get this kind of result. But uh, I think this offers, especially for natural textures, a really believable blend. Uh, so, uh, and essentially, What's happening here again, we've got our UVs. I'm just using steps, smooth steps to create our blend points. And this is going into a series of lerps, right? The first lerp is uh, creating the, the mixed texture that's the high point of both. The second texture is, in this case, um, let's grab our radius back again, is blending away from that mixed texture into our grass texture. And then the final one takes that resulting texture and blends in the rock texture. And then this is adding the shadows, which are coming from here. Just, again, a simplified version of what I've shown you in the past. Um, here's the shadow map alone. And we've got our pixel depth offset and our normal map. So uh, I think that is all I wanted to cover in this video. It's already probably running a little long. Uh, so this is a fairly complicated topic. And uh, you know, it's hard to get good results. Hopefully, this gives you some options for improving things over uh, you know, the kind of the standard method, which blocks you off of using pixel depth offset and um, you know, offers quite a lot of visual artifacts. But in any case, thanks for watching and see you next time.